I assume you are going to vote for this uh, tax bill. Yep. I Absolutely. assume you expect it's going to pass. Yeah. But why are so many individual Americans not convinced that it's good for them? The popularity is well below 50 percent, depending on what poll you look at. What are they misunderstanding? Well, I don't think they're misunderstanding anything. They just watched D.C. in the swamp over the past couple of decades, and the average American hasn't had a wage rate increase in 30 years. So you can hardly blame them for being skeptical, right? And so we got to convince them. The best evidence, I always say, go to Vegas, right? You can go to Vegas and check the odds. Are they the odds on for this thing passing and economic growth and what will really happen to the debt and deficit, what will really happen to your wages? Uh, politicians are going to sell you. I, I'm very optimistic. I taught economics for 20 years at the college level. And it, stay at home, a uh, single mom at $40,000 is going to get over 1000 back. $70,000 family with two kids gets 20059 back. Corporate rates go way down. We're competing with Ireland that's got a 13% rate. The deficit and the debt is the big deal, right? The, uh, the opponents are using that one as the biggie. And so the tax bill itself, that may not pay for it, but the economy will. If you keep growing at three like we are right now, and the Fed's saying we're getting to four for the next couple quarters maybe, uh, that pays for it, right? All we got to come up with is $150 billion a year. If you're growing at three, that does it. And so across the board on every major issue I see, it's a winner. And so uh, once people see in February their uh, withholding go down and their take-home pay go up, uh, that's going to be great. Well, that will make people feel happy. Take yep. me, I, I, I suspect that one of the things that, that individual taxpayers question about this legislation is the idea, they get the idea that, that corporate taxes need to come down probably, that, yeah. that they're coming down to make them more, more competitive. But the yep. individual taxes don't relatively come down as much in terms of the rates. But yep. I would think, put on your e economics professor hat yep. and yep. explain to this audience Yep. how lower corporate and business taxes are going to, in your view, I'm sure you believe, yep. flow through to individuals in the form yep. of higher wages uh, and, and the like. Yeah, the, the easiest argument is all of civilization, right? All of civilization, you had massive central governments in charge of human history until 1776, and everyone was poor, right? Everyone in the world made $1,000 per capita. Then what happened? You decentralize, you put money back in the hands of people, you incentivize business, and then you grow. And so instead of making 1,000, the average American now makes 40,000 or 50,000 a year. And that's very simply the answer. China and India, when I started teaching econ 20 years ago, were making $1,000 per capita. Now they're up to 10 grand because they went with free markets. And so you got to be pro-business uh, business is where you go to work every morning. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not pro-business, I don't know how you get pro-growth. And pro-growth is the only thing that makes you richer. And so, I mean, I mean it's, to me, it's just common sense. If you give money back to the consumer, uh, that's good too, right? You get a demand side pop. But the only thing that increases productivity, right, is people working with more capital in their hands. That's what makes you a rich country. And so we're going to incentivize capital. Uh, we're going to give you know, full expensing in year one. You're going to see massive capital investment, right. more plant, you know, uh, more capital equipment purchases, and then more hiring. So the college kids I taught for 20 years uh, can go out and have maybe multiple job offerings, which is unheard of right now. Right now you hustle to try and find one congressman, job. Congressman, hey, yep. Congressman Brad, it's Brian Sullivan. Sure. Listen, yeah. all that aside. You're yep. in Virginia. You are the epitome of the state that has taken New Jerseyans, New Yorkers, Mass Virginia, all red has gone a lot blue, especially around the D.C. area. People yep. are moving south. Yep. Do you believe that your state, the great Commonwealth of Virginia, Tyler yep. Matheson, yep. will see an influx of population from the higher tax northern states? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's the ultimate irony, right? So everyone hates the high tax. Well, they, don't hate, they don't like paying high taxes. So they're all moving to Virginia to have a pro-business low tax rate. And then they come and then they're voting on the other side of the aisle for higher tax rates and more regulation, which they just moved away from. So, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of an irony. Right. And also the state only grew at 0.6 percent last year. We always used to outpace the country as a whole, right, which grew at one and a half. So Virginia grew at 0.6. And guess, uh, you know, a lot of government workers, they're all solid people. But if they want a pay raise, guess what? You better get economic growth in Virginia going so we can pay your tab. And so I, I don't get it, right? Everybody should yeah. be 100% pro-growth uh, no matter what line of work you're in.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.